It's Coach Miller again from B2B Lax. What I want to talk about today is team clearing, and I want to draw it out for you so you can see you know, how it all goes down, all right? So gone are the days where we've had the settle clears, okay? Everything's on the fly now. You don't get very few like substitutions where you can set everything up properly because the rules have changed. So what I'm going to do is show you a clear off of a save or whatever scenario, okay? So goalie makes the save, and we have our people in the game playing defense. So you have your goalie. I'm going to draw these guys out. You have a defenseman here, say a defenseman there, a defenseman over there. You have a midi. You have a midi, and say you have your long stick midi. So you have everybody kind of inside the restraining box like that, okay? So now the case is what goes down. So say you don't get any type of fast break look so you can get the ball up and out. That's what you always want to try to do, get the ball up and out as quickly as possible to get the ball over, create some unsettled situations, maybe get some layups, okay? But assuming that's not the case and the goalie diverts the ball out to one of the sides, you know, one of the side defensemen, let me draw you what it's going to look like now, all right? So... Got the goalie with the ball, boom. We want a defenseman to pop out to either of his sides, okay? Like that. We'll say that your box or your substitution box is over here, so your team is right there, okay? Let's send this defenseman in the middle, say he's got a pretty decent stick skill, send him to this far corner, all right? Send one midi, who is down here, you have three midis all together, I like to send one mini deep to get him out of the way, all right? To clear with one last guy. You have your attackman down here too, mind you. Attackman there, attackman there, and say attackman there or something like that, all right? Make sure these guys are spread out and get, your, get somebody up there because you might have this look potentially, you know, that could happen. And then I want to keep one midi there, keep them kind of in tight, and another midi breaking out to here, all right? And if needed, you could always sub this midi off and put on one of your, you know, big offensive players or whatever like that, okay? Doesn't matter. So but you, now you have this type of situation, okay? So you have two defensemen, a goalie, a midi down low on the restraining line, two midis on either corner of the sideline, and the midi at the far restraining line. That's key, get him down there, okay? So the ball goes out here to the sideline. Now this guy, this defenseman has the ball, all right? What I like to see here is I like to see this. This attackman's kind of in the way. So the ball goes here. Well, have this attackman up here. And this attackman over there. And this attackman there. The ball goes there. I like to see this midi cut up. This midi cut this way. This defenseman cut down. And this midi come back to there. All right, so, and then, now what happens is this defenseman can either look up to this, this cutting midi. Most likely is never going to have this pass to this guy. <clears throat> can look down to this defenseman cutting down, or potentially, if he has nothing, if he has this guy, it's going to be rare because he's not going to necessarily get back, or he has the overpass, or he can get it back to the goalie, all right? So say he has nothing there, and now we're here, so this guy... Let's all reset it to where they would be. Like I said, this defenseman over here has usually got a pretty good stick, okay? So now it looks like this, okay? Now the ball has been reversed and is over here, okay? So you've reversed it once. If you come over once, you've reversed it twice. If you reverse it twice, and, or if you reverse it at least once, and then it comes over again, you're going to get some type of a look. Because you remember, you have an extra guy. You have the goalie. So now, you basically just reverse it. So you have this defenseman cut up. What's most likely going to happen is this midi coming back down, who was originally there, is going to have a look. You know, or you might be able to cut this defenseman up. You know, this guy's going back up, this guy's coming back over, and this guy's clearing through. So you're clearing through with an extra guy, all right? I mean, you're, and you're, yeah, you're clearing with an extra guy, but you're also doing it by sending a guy way down here, so you're doing it, you're having less defense on this side of the ball. 
Uh, so what will happen here is you can look for here, you can look for this community MIDI. So say you get to there, what's going to happen now is it's going to open up. Now you just play lacrosse and you might be able to get the pass up to there or you might be able to pass down to this attackman. This guy's going to float around. These attackmen are going to look for open spaces, whatever it may be. So that's the way I like to set it up, kind of on a string. But the key is getting this MIDI to the far side restraining line, okay? Get this MIDI to the far side restraining line, restraining line to clear it out. And then you got to work, make sure that these defensemen can throw that overpass and make sure that this defenseman can handle the ball because sometimes he might be catching it there or breaking up or catching it in one of the corners or something like that. So I just wanted to walk through a basic clear and how you can go about that. One last thing is make sure that the attackmen aren't just falling asleep, but they're actually looking for open seams and trying to get open. Clearing the ball is key. You clear the ball as soon as you, as soon as you get the ball in your stick and you're starting to clear it's the start of your offense. And then you can start and you know, score some goals. Hey, Coach Miller here, and I have a question for you. Are you a youth or high school player or parent that's thinking about the college lacrosse recruiting process? If you're on the younger side, you're probably wondering, how do I get started? And if you're older, well, you're probably a little antsy that the process isn't moving as quickly as it should, or you're neck deep in it and you might not be getting any traction. Trust me, I've been there myself and so have all the other guys I know. Parents, former players, the kids I currently coach in high school, whatever it is. Kids and parents just don't have a very firm grip on the process, how it works, what they should be doing. They don't have the insider knowledge of what exactly coaches are looking for in a prospect beyond whether or not he can play. And because of that, kids and parents actually end up making crucial mistakes that actually hurt their chances of getting recruited. Well, what if I told you we spent a couple of months working with Matt Kerwick, the head coach at Cornell, Scott Urich at UDC, and Jim Berkman at Salisbury, putting together some completely free training that would help you fix and avoid those deadly mistakes. I've got to tell you, these coaches have been recruiting kids for years and they know exactly how prospects can get their attention. And if you're making any of these mistakes, your stock goes way down in their eyes. Our coaches actually like to call these mistakes recruitment killers because they absolutely kill your chances of being recruited. And if you're not getting emails or calls back from coaches, it's likely because you're doing the wrong things. So the four of us sat down and we worked to put together something pretty cool. We actually call it our recruitment killer analysis tool. You go to the site and you walk through our analysis tool, which takes just about a minute. And our custom software takes all your answers and figures out your number one recruitment killer. The number one thing that's holding you back. Then you just enter in your email and we actually instantly take you to a video where Coach Kerwick and I sit down and address your number one killer and show you how to fix it in about 15 minutes. And then we email you a backup copy so you can watch it later. You don't have to watch it right now, or you can come back and watch it again. It's awesome, and again, it's totally free. So if you finally want to feel like you're in full control of the recruiting process, and you don't want to make any of these simple mistakes that might crush your chances of playing in college, go click the link down below in the description of this video, and you can immediately go through our recruitment killer analysis tool. Who knows, in the next 15 to 20 minutes, your whole perspective on the recruiting process might change for the better. Hope to see you on the other side.